thank you for coming today. Um, to our panel, let me just start by bringing everybody out. First off, uh, let me introduce Mr. Richard Jenkins. Yeah. 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 Scripts and like, well, he's 17. Um, do you remember that audition? Do you remember anything about the day? Because I have a really strong memory of that day. I remember the studio test and I was terrified. For American Horror Story. For American Horror Story, yeah. It was me and two other guys. And you were dressed very similarly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, you were very sweet and warm and helpful. Yeah, that was an interesting show because Evan, um, we had to find somebody to play Jessica Lange's son. And <clears throat> Evan, I was like, well, he looks the most like Jessica Lange, and he's pretty good. Let's roll the dice. Um, and I remember when, when I directed that first episode and when we got into set, I, he did like a take or two, and I was like, holy shit, this kid is so talented. And we have, we have remained friends and collaborators. I think almost 12 years now. It was a long time ago. Um, and Evan has grown up, of course, in front of everybody's eyes. So this was an interesting role, the role of Jeffrey Dahmer. Really complicated, really difficult, really harrowing. So we did write it for Evan. And <laughs> <laughs> but Evan had done a series of um, difficult roles for me. And we had talked about, you know, he wanted to, you know, take a little bit of a break and it was cool. And, and so we started reading other people and I said to our casting director, I, I just I just know that this was written for Evan and Evan is the guy I'm gonna call him. So I called up Evan and I said, I'm gonna send you something. Don't just read it before you say no. <laughs> And I told him what it was, and he was like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> but I, before, I said two things. Watch one little clip and then read the script. So talk about that experience of you deciding that you would commit to doing this part, which was so difficult. Yeah, it was, uh, well, it was terrifying, first of all. Um, but um, I, 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 first of all, I watched the, that Stolen Phillips interview that you told me to watch, and then I read it, um, and and I was just shocked. I was I was uh, my jaw was dropping at, at what he had done, at uh, the system's failures to stop him. Um, I was just blown away by it, and also I, I, I was looking at the scope of it too. Um, ages 17 and 34, mm -hmm. I just knew it was going to be. Uh, incredibly difficult to try to tackle all of that, like the practicality of shooting it. So, um, but I was um, up for the challenge, I think. I think I just really wanted to push myself and see if I could do it. And how did you do it? Because your way of, of preparing and being has always been very mysterious to me, and I kind of in, in all of it. Um, can you talk about the things that you did and the research? Like, how did you learn how to talk like him and walk like him? What was that process like as an actor, portraying somebody who is so notorious? I just, I, well, I, I, I read as much as I could. I, I watched as much as I could. Um, I listened to him a lot. I had this 45 minute audio composite I listened to every day and tried to learn his speech patterns. And, and he speaks very openly about you know, his experience and why he did what he did. So I, it was helpful to try to understand maybe his mindset 
Um, so I, I, I worked on that a lot and just, just kept doing it every day, all day. Um, trying to you wore lifts in your shoes. You had to learn to walk differently. I you wore yeah. weights on your arms yeah. because he, when he walked, actually had no mobility. So you, you, you really did your research about those things. Oh yeah, well, I, I fortunately had about four months to, right. to work on all this. So yeah, I, was, I, was, I had weights in my arms and I was wearing his, uh, you know, the wardrobe's jeans and shoes with the lifts and the glasses and had a cigarette in my hand all times. Just really trying to get all these externals down so when we were shooting, I wasn't thinking about any of it. Right. Yeah. It's funny because I know Evan to be very charming and very easy. He spent Thanksgiving in my house. My children have sat on his lap. I'm like, Evan, like he's very, very funny. But it was interesting when we finished wrapping this, we were, we finished shooting it and we had a very long time to edit it. We were starting to do the press and Nisi said to Evan and to myself that she felt like she had never met Evan before. Can you talk about that, Nisi? Hello. Hello. <laughs> something that you did with your team sort of right after you did getting on which sort of led to this role which was written for you um, where you called up your team and you said let me reintroduce myself to you I did actually it was actually before um, getting on I felt like the industry was very kind but they told me that I had a lane because they met me at the Reno 911s, the multicams, the broad comedies, and they were like, oh no, we know what you do. And I real, I kept saying to myself, I know I can do more. I know I can do it. I just need a chance. And I never got it. So I called a team meeting with all of the, you know, handlers and agents, managers, all the folks, and I said, I called this meeting because I wanted to reintroduce myself. I think you think you know me, but I changed. <laughs> Things have changed, and I know that there is a depth because, like Ryan said, people who can make you laugh can make you cry. I never wanted to be funny. I was just born that way. <laughs> I, I didn't even know that comedy was a gift because I got in trouble for it all the time. I got pinched in church. I got put on punishment because my report card said talks too much. And I said, well, what was you in there talking about? And I said, I was telling jokes, you know? And 
<laughs> so just things like that. So I didn't know it was a thing. So to be able to tell Brenda's story, it not only proved to all of the naysayers in the business that that was not for me and that's not your lane, that not only can I do it, I can do it well. Yeah. Oh. my spouse was the one who reminded me. She said, even more than that, baby, you proved it to yourself. Mm. And to that I say, amen, and thank you, Ryan, for seeing me the way a lot of people had not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this <laughs> sense and um, when we were doing this part um, again written for Richard so but I thought oh he's never gonna do this <laughs> um, it's a really big time commitment and I called him up and he was wonderful and he said well let me read something so I believe we sent the first three scripts and much to my surprise and joy he said yes I want to do it so Richard I know that having talked to you and worked with you like was this part scary for you? Was it? Was were you nervous about doing it? What made you want to do it? Well, I, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> when you called and it said, "Why don't you play Jeffrey Dahmer's father?" I'm good at you. And that's I, I. But then I read it. I read it, and it. It. The only thing I could think of was, if Jeffrey Dahmer is your son, do you stop loving him? Mm. No, you don't. And that, I just said, I want to do this. This is what I want to do. And no, I, you know, Evan, um, uh, <laughs> I can, hey, Evan, how you doing? <laughs> but he was different with me. He was different with his dad than he was with almost anybody else in this movie, mm -hmm. in this, in this miniseries. Um, we did, it was interesting. I mean, um, he actually laughed a few times on, on set. But, but I, I, uh, I really love the way it was written. I love, um, it was so human that you do blame yourself. If, if you have any sense of, of uh, 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 humanity in you, that did I do this? Was I part of this? He actually, his father wrote a book called um, A Father's Story. It's really wonderful. Uh, and he talks about this. And, and he, he talks about it being a cautionary tale of, you know, I, I, if you're a parent, look out for this stuff. Um, because Jeffrey tried to tell him. And he didn't want to know if his son was gay. <laughs> and, that's, and, and, and he didn't want to hear it. And his son said, I have, um, you know, I have fantasies that the other kids don't. And he didn't, no, 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 no. For, so, you, yeah. for you in this series, what was the most difficult scene for you to do, prepare for to do as an actor? Um, well, I, you know, for me, it's always, I, I just don't know how it's going to end up, you know. And uh, you, you, I try not to steer it and let it, I try to let it take me where it goes and, and not, fight it so much but the the scene in the um after he's convicted where the father says it's my fault it's not your fault mm -hmm. um I, it, because it was a, with a lot of people standing around it was a, a moment where you had no time they were going to take him away pretty soon and and it was a lot of information to be getting to um so i i after it was over i, I was glad for all that stuff because it made it different than I thought it would be. At right. The time. Yeah. Well, one of the things about this show that's so interesting is, you know, episode seven, Cassandra was um, Glinda's and Nisi's big episode. And it really was about, I think, something so powerful. And, and Nisi and I talked about it before we made it, and it felt so modern to me. Nisi, could you talk about the themes of when you, when you read that episode, Cassandra, what did you think when, when you first started to prepare and dive into it? I thought the story, unfortunately, was timeless. 
because a lot of the things that were playing out at this time are still playing out today. You still have a lot of marginalized people who are being over-policed. Mm -hmm. You still have um, a lot of homophobia that exists in the world. There is still so much white privilege um, in the world. Like it was, it, it just started to feel like this story is not new and it's also not old. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you related to it in so many different ways. And if I had a dollar for every time um, a black woman was not heard, I mean, not even, thank you, sis, because you know what we're talking about. <laughs> because the thing of it is, and it is not just in the community when you say, oh, you know, they're not hearing my voice because, you know, I'm, I'm out here picketing because they're not saying the thing. It's deep. It's even when you go to the doctor. And you tell them what is wrong with you, and they tell you, no, it's not. Yeah. It's like, you're not, you're not hearing me. And I, I have been a Glenda Cleveland in my life. I have been in a place where I was saying the thing, and it went unbelieved. And um, to not be heard is painful. And that is where I felt like I entered in with her because I always try to find a place where our, the character that I play intersects with my real life so I can bring as much humanity to it as possible. And when I tapped in to the times in my life when I wasn't her, I wept for this woman mm -hmm. because she never gave up. She never gave up. And, and I take that with, that was one of the, my takeaways, her gift to me, was you speak your truth, long and loud, even if your voice shakes, you stay on it, you stay on the ride. One of the things I loved um, the most when we were shooting is some of the scenes, you know, we, we literally rehearsed like a play, which was fascinating to, to do, which many times in long form you don't get the opportunity to. And one of my favorite days on set was when we did the, the sandwich scene between Nisi and Adam, <laughs> which was, for me, really the reason I was so excited about it was because it was like, okay, here are finally are two of my favorite people, these two heavyweights, who finally have a scene that was, I believe, four and a half pages long, where they just get to sit in a chair and go at each other in a very sort of very different way. So Evan, can, do you remember shooting that day? Do you remember? <laughs> Tell me about your thoughts about that scene, which has become somewhat of a notorious moment in the show. Talk about that. Uh, yeah, I was <clears throat> I was very excited to shoot that scene. I was excited to work with you and have a real long, uh, full scene and go toe to toe. Um, and uh, I, I love that scene because it's you know it, it's Jeffrey Dahmer is just powerless in it. I mean, he really just wants you to. Uh, Glenda to take away the complaint, but she's not going to do that. And, and even trying to secretly punish you with the sandwich, uh, <laughs> you're, you know, Glenda's aware of that too. And, and so he's just completely um, flailing. And and, uh, and at the end, Glenda really just says checkmate, and and he just knows that he's lost and it's over. So uh, I, I love that scene for that reason. Nisi, what do you think? I, it was the thing I was looking forward to the most uh, in filming because she finally gets to confront him properly. You know, it's that face to face. It is that moment when she sat down and was like, okay, so you want me to do it? Scared to death, by the way. But this is the moment. This is the little window and either I'm gonna say what he wants to hear and try to hurry up and get him out of here, or I'm gonna take a deep breath and put my big girl pants on and say, well then let's, let's, let's get to it. Mm -hmm. What happened to the baby? What happened to the other fellow who's down the hall? Where is this one? Where is that one? What's the screaming? What, what's going on? <laughs> you know, and so I love that she got that moment and as scared as she was, 
she put that face on, and as soon as he walked out that door, she said, oh, God. You know, <laughs> <laughs> all, of, all of the fear just, you know what I mean? It, it just descended on her shoulders. It was like, my God, I looked fear in the face, and I, you know, I did it. So I was, I was really looking forward to that moment. And because we never really had long scenes together, I didn't know what to expect from you. So it was a beautiful gift uh, and, it, and an exchange in our art that um, I'll never forget. One of the things too about uh, so like, like doing shit like this that I always like to do is it's always very important in everything that I try and do in all my work to remember, I would say, remember actresses over 40. Like, Woo. like, you got to like, 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 work with three powerhouses art who aren't here today, Penelope M. Miller and Molly Ringwald and Mike Lerner. And what was that like? Because I think those three actresses are, and are so incredible. And what, what did it feel like when you found out Molly Ringwald was playing your wife? It must have been fun. I mean, she's I, so great. I, I thought she's playing my daughter. She's Molly is just fantastic. She's fantastic. Um, uh, and not only can she as a wonderful actor, she's a wonderful writer. I don't know if you ever read her pieces in the New Yorker. But they're amazing. A translator, a wonderful translator. Yeah. Um, she was, uh, it was a, a treat. It was just a treat working with her. Um, it, was, it was thrilling to work with her because she auditioned for that role. And when she, you know, when she, you know, when she came up on the, the audition reel, I was like, oh, what? Molly, and she was so phenomenal. And again, like Nisi was talking about, I think somebody who has perhaps been seen in the past in, in the industry as, you know, a comedian, a romantic comedy person, but you know, the same with Penelope, I'm just capable of great pathos and great depth. I loved all your scenes with, with Molly. And I know Evan did as well. Yeah, you know, she's, um, um, she's just there. She's just there, you know, and whatever you do, she's with you. And, yeah. and I, I uh, we became friends. Um, I, we hear, I still hear from her a lot, and uh, she's just, she's, uh, I'm, thank you, Ryan. I guess that's what I meant to say, but thank you. Um, yeah, because she But bringing all the seasoned performers together. We're not going to say, oh, we're going to say seasoned. Well, season. Actually, yeah. actually, actually mm -hmm. Michael Lerner and I could have dated. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're not that far apart in age, you know, uh, <laughs> which is... Uh, yeah, uh, this is my way of saying I was too old to play my uncle. But, um, uh, I, I, uh, grateful for the opportunity. Um, but he did say, you're going to play him when he's 30 years old. I said, no, I don't. Yeah, he goes for that. And we have an yeah. amazing actor who looks so yeah, much like Richard Miller. Yeah. Thank you very really much. Um, one of the things that's also very interesting that I want to end up talking with today about is, you know, sometimes you make a show or a movie or something that you love and then you know nobody sees it and you're like well the, the victory was the making of it mm. and sort of the thing about this show that was so interesting like this is this had always been something that was a labor of love for me i worked for close to 10 years to try and get this made and researched oh. it very heavily but it was a very interesting thing i think when we made it we were all very proud of the work, and then it came out, right? And suddenly, it did become this very interesting cultural phenomenon. I think we released this past week that over a billion hours have been viewed of the show. Oh my God. Uh, I think it's one of the top three Netflix shows of all time. Um, and I remember Evan, you and I talking about it in a sort of very moving way, saying, how is this happening? Can you talk about why do you think this show became a zeitgeist moment for the culture? What is it about the show that, that landed so heavily here? I, I really don't know. I, I, don't know. <laughs> um, I, I know everybody was working on it, who we were all on board with the same message and, and, and wanted to put our all into it, but um, I, I really have no idea. Why do you think? Why do you think? Why do I think? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I don't know. I sort of feel that the world is a very dark and anxious place, and in some weird way, the show is a place where you put your anxiety. You know, it's a, it's, it has a. It was shot in a very interesting way. If you, you know, it was very plotted out. It's, it's very slow takes. It's a very meditative show. You really stick with the actors. There's not a lot of quick, you know, video cutting. I think it had a tone that pulled people in, and ultimately, I think it was the performances and I think what it was about. I think that people really kind of did understand what it was about. Um, Nisi, what, what do you think it's become what it's become in the culture? To uh, echo my good friend here, I have no idea. <laughs> but what I am grateful for is the prism that you approach this through. The, the unpacking of the victims and their stories. The, these, you knew, I had heard about Jeffrey Dahmer um, when I, you know, was heard my parents talking about it. As a white fella eating black kids. <laughs> like, what's going on? You know, so you never really got to know who, who are these people. I had heard about him, but who are these people? And I, to get to know them and their families, um, all of the collateral damage, the special people that he took from this world, even though Glenda was not killed by Jeffrey Dahmer, I still consider her one of his victims. Mm -hmm. It was a slow torture. You know what I mean? It's the torture of your mind and your spirit. And I didn't know about her. You know, and I, I, it meant something to be able to understand how all of this heinousness that he put into the world, who it really affected. So I'm, I'm happy that the lens that we saw it through was the victims mm -hmm. and that their stories and their voices are now told a million viewing hours People know them now. You mm -hmm. said a million. You said a billion. <laughs> Richard talked about uh, one of his favorite scenes. Evan, did you have a favorite scene in terms of that you were really happy with how it turned out or the preparation was worth it? Or does anything stick out other than the sandwich scene that we talked about <laughs> earlier for you? <laughs> um, well, I, I, I don't know. If it, it, I, there was a scene. Richard was, uh, we were different, uh, Richard and I, and, and we talked about acting a lot, and, and you were very helpful um, at times. I know I struggled at that diner scene um, a lot, actually, and, uh, and, and, and you were just incredibly helpful and, and fatherly and, and sort of explaining that, don't, don't, don't push, don't, just kind of let it, let it kind of come out and go and, and go with it and see where it takes you. And, and it was um, uh, very freeing, and I, I really needed to hear it. And I learned a lot from that, and uh, so I'm, I'm sort of proud of what I was able to take away from the shooting of that scene. So thank you, Richard. Thank you. Uh -huh. I love that scene too. Uh, Nisi, did you did you have something um, that either pushed you as an actor, or that you were happy with how it all came together ultimately? Two little pieces. One was when I went to Conrad's funeral. And I had to sit on that pew with his father. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm so sorry. Because she tried. You you just going to take this baby back in the house? You're not going to get his ID? You're not going to ask? You're not going to do nothing? And then you look at the pain in that man's face. I that scene was very, very special to me. And then the little bit where mm. she has the moment with the pastor and she says, because if I keep on like this, I'm not gonna know myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna recognize myself. And I have experienced people in my family and close to me who have had personal 
challenges and trauma that they couldn't get on the other side of and you you watch that shift and then shrink and disappear and, and, and become different, hardened. And I, I just, I could relate. I could relate to her in that moment. I feel after listening to this that I have to go home and write a comedy for you. For you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to write something about a detective agency or a small town. <laughs> 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 well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>